Father John, uh, this, this question is really uh, the, the big one. For anyone who's entered into a life of prayer, it's universal. Everybody from the beginning of time to today has experienced this problem, uh, and that is distractions in prayer. So how do we, what are some ways we can deal with distractions in prayer and minimize them as best we can? Yeah, distractions are one of the universal obstacles in yeah. our prayer life. And you know, right off the bat, we have to remember that sometimes we put ourselves in a situation where we're going to be distracted. You know, so we've got our cell phone on, we've got our laptop right there, and we say, well, I'm going to do my meditation now. Yeah, yeah right, work, forget yeah. it, you know, it's not going to happen. So we need to take seriously kind of the first step of meditation, a Christian meditation, which is to concentrate, to give myself a place, a time, a situation, day after day, uh, where it's going to help me focus on God. That's the first thing. But then it's interesting to know there's two different types of distractions, and the spiritual writers talk about this a lot. There's, first of all, voluntary distractions, and then there's involuntary distractions. A voluntary distraction is a thought comes to me, and I'm trying to pray, and then I start thinking about the new car that we're going to buy. All right? So it comes to me, and if I pay attention to that. If I turn my attention away from God and go think about the car on purpose, that's a voluntary distraction. And that does a lot of damage to my prayer life. Because I'm really saying that, well, God, you're not as important to me right now as this car I'm going to buy. You know, so I'm not really exercising my faith. And how can God work in my prayer when I'm doing that? Voluntary distractions, we've got to cut them out. And that takes discipline, willpower. We need the help of God's grace, but we need to make some decisions there. You know, before you go on to the second one, it, it, it's funny, it reminds me a bit of going to a restaurant with my wife. And if I sit and, 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 and her back is to a television, I'm choosing a, a, a voluntary, a place where I will experience voluntary distract, distractions. So oftentimes I need to go and find a place in the restaurant to get my back to the television so I can pay attention to my wife. Is that yeah, a good so she can be distracted by the TV. Well, she, but she doesn't have that problem. <laughs> okay. You know, doesn't like football, you know. Yeah, that's exactly it. We have, to, we have to make some decisions when it comes to voluntary distractions. Yeah. But then there's the second type of distraction, uh, which is involuntary distractions. I might be doing my meditation, and a thought comes to me about my, you know, the car we're going to buy or, you know, what this project that I'm working on or different things, they, they just kind of come into my head. I didn't invite them. I don't want them. That's an involuntary distraction. And it's the moment of truth. In that moment, if I just kind of let it keep flying and keep my attention focused on God, what am I doing? I'm exercising faith, hope, love, humility. I'm, I'm giving glory to God. Uh, and this is why he doesn't always take away the distractions himself, because he wants us to fight. He wants us to battle, to exercise kind of the Christian battle uh, in choosing him over and over again. So I might, I might have a hundred involuntary distractions coming at me during my 10 minutes of meditation. And that's great if every time I turn my, my attention back to God, that's a wonderful meditation, even so, if I feel tired at the end. So you use words like fight and battle. So you're saying... I should get mad and frustrated each time there's a thought that draws me away from God? Oh, absolutely not. That's kind of what the enemy wants. He wants you to be distracted and then get distracted by the fact that you're distracted. Right. That's what he wants. Right. You know? So, no, we stay calm. It's like, you know, you're driving down the highway and you're listening to a podcast or something uh, and, and you might kind of start veering out of the lane and you notice it so you turn back calmly into the... That's how, that's, what ha that's how you deal with involuntary distractions. They come, and I calmly turn my attention back to God. And that's, you don't give the thought a whole lot of energy, really. Yeah. Your energy is really just gently turning back. One of the saints has said that if you spend your entire time in prayer t gently turning yourself back, each time you feel you realize you're off the tracks, you know, in some sense that can have more merit than just an easy time in prayer where you're not struggling with distractions. So you just, you shouldn't become discouraged. Yeah, never, discouragement never comes from the Holy Spirit. And so maybe you know the answer to this question, when is it that distractions will stop in your prayer life? <laughs> uh, general answer is never. When you're dead. Actually. When you're dead. Well, 72 hours after death, right, according so, to saving right, days. Okay. <laughs> but there are times when, in particular moments, uh, like, for instance, uh, St. Teresa of Avila, was a nun from the 16th century, she said she called a type of prayer, prayer of quiet, mm -hmm. where God actually will quiet your soul and take away all distractions for a time. And he gives us those gifts sometimes. Yeah. So it's not all just kind of fighting away. God is there, always there, and he knows what we need. To dig deeper in the spiritual life, to explore a little more about the better part, go to rcspiritualdirection.com. That's R as in Roman, C as in Catholic, 
spiritualdirection.com.